Okay, what I'm doing here, it's a tub I've had, it's an old tub I'd got, I was using it as a water butt. But um, I'm going to try my best to turn it into a skimmer if possible. So what I've actually done up to now, I have marked from the floor up 20 inches on the tub and now I've got to cut the top off. So we'll get that done and then go from there. Okay guys, as you can see, the start of the skimmer. I used the handsaw, as you can see on the floor there. I use a handsaw to cut them because I think you get a straighter top. They seem to come out more level with a handsaw. I don't know whether you can see it. It's a little bit up and down, but it's a lot neater than when I tried doing one with my jigsaw. That was uh, a bit wavy. So anyway, there we have it. That's the start of the new skimmer. Okay, I hope you can see what I've done inside there. I've cut another four inches off the other barrel and put it around the inside there and that, we, that is going to be for the shelf that will hold the basket to catch the debris hope you can see that it's just a circle around the inside from what was left of this tub just four inches up cut it out it does take quite a bit of getting in there but it does go in now with this skimmer I've been racking my brain to find some sort of um, bas basket or net or whatever to filter the debris out from the water and all of a sudden it came to me and I thought lily baskets so I've actually been and bought three lily baskets because the mesh on them I um, hope you can see it is really nice it's ideal for this job and they're cheap enough so what I've got is three different sizes and I want to see how it goes. I will try the small one first obviously. Then I can, if it's not big enough, I can then go to the bigger square, cut out a square one. And I think that should be plenty, but if not, I've always got the big one. I've used the smaller one for one particular reason. The mesh on it is finer than the others. The mesh gets a little bit bigger as the bigger the basket gets. So the small one has got quite a fine mesh, it's just right really. So I'm going to start with the small one and see how things go from there. What I've done here, I've cut a circle out of the uh, perspex. Now with a bit of luck, this should drop into there. Like so, just sit on that ring that we put in earlier. So I think you can see that. Let's give us a nice base and as you can see I've cut a hole in the center of it and what that is going to do is house my filter my mesh filter which is so that's got our shelf in our pump will obviously fit under that so now it's cut the front face so the water can actually flow in to our skimmer as you can see I've cut the hole in the front for the water to flow through. I have cut it about a half inch um, higher than the shelf inside. See how that goes. I've left that because I can cut it down a little bit if I want to. But we'll just see how the water flows over that and uh, we'll move on to the next bit. Right, so what I've done now is I've taken a strip from a cut off from the barrel. And what I've actually done is made a face plate. Now that is what will actually bolt to the front and trap the liner between it with some sealer as well, obviously. But there'll be nuts and bolts go around that and that will seal the water level on the pond. It is what they call the weir, where the water goes over the weir. And this will actually fit over there 
I've cut the hole exactly the right size that will actually fit over there trap the liner and hopefully make it waterproof so all I shall need now is to drill the holes and some stainless steel nuts and bolts to put that into place okay what I'm gonna do now is plumb the pump in the bottom I've got a hole to cut in the side I'm gonna have it going out the side at the bottom so I'm gonna plumb the pump in and uh, we'll have another look then right the job so far um, you can see I've put my uh, outlet on the side of the tub there that will be connected to the waterfall or wherever I'm going to send it and inside I have fitted my pump to the outlet that's fitted to the outlet and also the actual ring that holds the shelf in um, this ring round here I haven't stuck it or anything yet because I'm still not quite sure on the level I want it at so I should be leaving that as it is for now until I've had it actually in location and working to see where that ring wants to fit if you look down there you will see I have left plenty of pipe from the pump to the outlet there's a good reason for this that is so that if I want to lift the pump out and do anything to it I can do without disconnecting it if I'd have had the shorter pipe I obviously wouldn't have been able to do that so I've left plenty of pipe on there so I can actually lift the pump out of the skimmer just in case just to give it a clean out of service or whatever without having to disconnect all the pipes now in there I have um, put a piece of pipe around where the basket sits it's just a normal piece of pipe that I've just split down one side and clipped it in that's just to make the basket a snugger fit and also in the corner there I have just cut a little notch, I'm not sure whether you can see it, let me just turn it around so it's in the sun. I have just cut a little notch so the pump cable can go through. I shall cut another little notch in the top of the tub so it can come out the side of the tub. Now there was just one thing, when I was shaping the perspex to absolutely fit perfect into the barrel, I did mark one side as you can see there to make sure that I get the perspex in the same way round every time so I know exactly where it fits so I did mark that and uh, the basket it'll just drop in there like so so the skimmer's coming on we're getting very close to digging the hole out and installing the skimmer right so what I've decided to do being as I'm doing all this work is fit my water level keeps my water level it's like a ball cock type thing that I had on the other side of the pond well I've taken it off and I've now fitted it into the skimmer I have got it roughly where I want it but as you can see there is quite a bit of thread on the adjuster there so I can go quite a way up or down in adjustment so I think that's roughly where I want it so we'll see how that works it's just going to be nice to have all this all in one place instead of bits here and there around the pond I think so I thought while I was doing this I might as well fit that as well so now what I've got to do is cut the perspex so that it goes around it so I'll get that done and then come back right so what we've got there is where the actual um, that ball cock type thing goes I've built a little barrier around to stop any debris falling down the slot that I've cut for it so I've built up a little barrier to stop the water going that way there will obviously be water both sides it's the debris I want to keep out the rubbish I don't want that sliding down the side where the float is so I've built a little barrier around there use silicon to stick it and that should stop any debris going down there Right, what you see there is a big hole in the ground. I've dropped the water level on my pond by about six inches and I've now dug the hole out. So now it's a matter of just setting the skimmer to water level at the moment. Right, that's it all installed. Um, I did level it up. The main thing to get level was the weir. Where the water comes over, that's the bit that had to be level if the uh, filter is skimmer is slightly off um, that really doesn't matter we're not filling it to the brim 
it's just the weir, as long as the weir is level, that's all that matters. I'm now filling my pond up, so I'll give it half an hour and I'll be back with you. Well, as you can see, we're nearly there, not far to go now. Another half inch on the top. It does take a while. Um, if this is a little bit shaky, it's because I'm on Zoom. Um, it does take a while to fill my pond, I'm afraid. So it'll be another quarter of an hour, I would think. So I'll be back then. And there we go, it's just starting to flow over the top of the weir. And it all looks pretty good. Quite pleased with that. So now we'll just let it fill up and then we'll try the pump. Okay, as you can see there, we're getting a good flow over that weir. It's obviously, obviously not uh, full yet, but we have got a good flow over the weir. So I shall soon be putting my pond pump on and see how we go, but it's going well at the moment. Nicely into the basket, as you can see, it's collecting the debris already. There you are, the skimmer in full swing and fully fitted up. Like I say, I've just got the lid to do, get the lid on it. I might put a bar across the front gate just in case the fish try getting in there. Like I say, I've just got to disguise it a little more, but that will about do it. You could use a smaller tub. I mean, I only used that one because I'd got it. You could use a dustbin or something like that to do the similar sort of thing. But as you can see, it's collecting all the debris off the top of the pond. There's bits of grass, it's collecting all that scummy foam off the top as well, which is a plus. Working very well. Okay, it's the following day um, and it's been running over 12 hours now. I've just emptied the basket, it was full. I have got a slight design fault. Now where my autofill on the pond goes through the perspex there, I have built a little um, retaining wall round it um, we've had nothing but rain since last night and my pond level rose about an inch and of course it was going over the side and down beside the float instead of going down through the basket so what I've got to do is take that off I will make it a little bit bigger as well take that off and put another retaining wall round there and that should be it everything else seems to be working perfect so I shall do that now and then get back to you. Right now this is the problem, that little wall round where my uh, float goes for me auto fill is too low and too small so what I'm going to do is recut that and rebuild it. Okay that's got the wall built up around the auto top up so we're just waiting for it now to fill the pond back up and we shall switch it on. I haven't done a video on, I haven't shown on the video fixing the faceplate, what traps the pond liner between, because the pond digger does a very good video on fixing faceplates on skimmers on YouTube. So if you look for um, pond skimmers on YouTube and then look for the pond digger, he does a very good video on fixing the faceplate on a skimmer. It all seems to be good. All seems to be a lot better. If there's any more modifications to do, I will let you know. So, as ever, thanks for watching and happy ponding. <music>